Hello and welcome to our second episode of Seasons of Life. We have with us today Dr. Ravish Shankara, the neurosurgeon here in Hyderabad. Ravish Garu, welcome Hello. and thank you so much for obliging to come here to Align. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And uh, it's a pleasure ma'am and uh, your place is like such wonderfully done, it's so cozy. Coming from a background who's always worked in hospitals and seen like the psychiatry wards or psychiatry opd is always being so boring and i think this is a complete contrast to it what you've made i feel like once you enter this place only you have so much of positive energy flowing here thank you thank you so much and uh, it feels nice when you know what we've actually put our entire heart into when that is acknowledged i think you know it really feels nice thank yeah. you so much dr ravish uh, as the program goes you know i am trying to understand the different emotions that a person goes through to be doing what they are doing and today if you are you know such a nice and such an empathetic neurosurgeon that we all have in hyderabad there must be so much that you must also be going through on a day to day basis but prati roju kuda emotions anevi ups and downs anedi andarki nadustune untai of course you are seeing it more closely adi kaakunda from the perspective of a brain itself so that's where i felt maybe you know e conversation will throw some light into understanding the science and you know the actual uh, the alternative ways of understanding perspectives healing and all those things put together as we start off you know hope you know you've studied you what brought you into neurosurgery as such what was that which pushed you so during my uh, surgery days uh, so the idea was uh, when i was doing my general surgery Uh, residency i was associated with a plastic surgeon and then uh, i got interested in this precision surgery so when we were learning a lot of precision surgery i realized that neurosurgery is the highest precision surgery and uh, especially during my rotations when i was posted into a neurosurgery department that is where i fell in love with this uh, precision surgery and uh, of course it's like uh, it takes uh, the learning curve is so hard in this that it felt like a challenge to uh, really go into this so that's when the passion started and uh, i was fortunate enough that i cracked uh, neurosurgery in my entrance after general surgery and uh, got into a good institute from there it's it's been a very great journey after that i'm sure and uh, coming to what you're talking about the uh, emotional side of it i think as doctors as every doctor it's not only the emotion that we go through personally there's a lot of emotional aspect that gets uh, pushed on to us from the patient side from the relative side so i think it's it's one profession where you have to deal with so much of emotion at uh, from the day from the every day you start your day with some kind of an emotion and then by end of it yeah like you know you have highs you have lows at every day yeah, yeah. and prati roju when you start off you go to the hospital i'm sure you must be starting your day in a certain way but when you go there it could be a stark opposite yes of how the entire uh, uh, aspect of you know as you said patients while a relatives kavachu in court kavachu when so much of things come and uh, see when somebody comes to neurosurgery already a mart of intene somewhere you know oka bhayam oka you know the anxiety and everything starts off how do you think those patients actually keep up their hope and how do you you know help them in keeping up the hope maybe sometimes or seeing all these things on a day to day aspect how much of a hope do you have to hold on to because i'm sure you you must be seeing so many successes and i'm sure there there's other side also yes yes so asla yelaga how do you want to go back to doing this so i would say that uh, neurosurgery is not as scary as you think it is because uh, we have a lot of technology that is helping us these days so we are able to predict so many things what we are doing and uh, even technologies made surgeries very safe these days so uh, like you said this notion that okay if you have to go through a neurosurgeon or a neurosurgery your life is done yeah. so this notion was uh, very much there i think it's, it's a lot to do with the movies and everything and the and the literature that we read and about uh, all these things uh, but i think it's not that scary these days like uh, 90% of our surgeries are mostly successful 
course there is uh, an element where success is very subjective to what a patient might think it is and what we might think it is. So that is where uh, I think uh, the newer generation of neurosurgeons like me, we started understanding this, the meaning of success. We want to discuss it with the patients and uh, it's two ways. So technology is helping us understand the disease in a much detailed manner. So we are able to predict if we do a surgery, we are able to predict what will go wrong, what will go right and we can give this choice to patients these days. So that is where uh, I think uh, by discussing this thing, we are giving a lot of comfort to the patients and the relatives. I think so most of them are accepting these uh, surgeries in a much better way than they used to accept probably a decade back. So that is one definite change that has come through years and I have observed this change from the time I, I started my training days to what I am practicing right now. And of course, the topic of hope is so deep that, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's not that uh, if I recall my earlier days when I was in training, that is something that uh, was, I learned it in a hard way, the meaning of hope. So when we enter neurosurgery, and you enter into usually your training institutes are very high volume centers. So there uh, you end up uh, seeing so much of death, you see uh, so much of suffering and uh, you start uh, questioning like why am I even doing it? And then uh, you slowly uh, go through different phases and fortunately I had like good mentors who made me stick to it, who made me understand that these are phases that you will go through and that is when you become a good neurosurgeon. And then uh, there was a phase when I stopped thinking and I, I just kept on working uh, without understanding what I am doing and just kept working and then uh, not even thinking of the result. And then when you uh, slowly go through the thing and you, you become a senior in the, in the teaching institute, you have little more time to spend with uh, your books first thing and then you, you read a lot and then you start interacting with patients and you start interacting with relatives at at more ease. Yeah. That is why because you once you graduate to you being in, in second year or third year, you have more time with you. And then uh, you understand that uh, probably this emotion is far more exaggerated with the patient side, you know, and the relative side because they are going through so much. They have they're left their jobs, they left their daily routine and they are stuck in this hospital and this disease. So it's a strange thing if you if you consider if one person has a brain tumor, the entire family is suffering. So, and then uh, you, you start understanding these emotions. And then uh, those people only taught me like, you know, the meaning of hope. Your like, patients. Yeah, yeah. So those emotions, the hope they taught me, you know, like, uh, like I've, I've seen like uh, stark different uh, scenarios where uh, the son what was suffering and the parents were leaving their job and like, you know, completely sitting in the hospital for months together, getting the treatment done. And then the other side of the coin you see where the parents are uh, bedridden and the children are leaving their jobs and coming and serving their uh, children and uh, their parents. It's like you know you start learning that uh, it's that hope that is driving them that uh, they will become alright one day. And uh, you, you start uh, understanding that this hope is very important and I, I need to keep this hope alive. So that is when you start uh, practicing this perfection. So it, it's like, you know, when in the surgery, in the operation theater, obviously we are taught precision surgery that I'm talking about. But uh, patients teach us the importance of perfection. That uh, when they are relying so much on us and they're riding their entire emotions and hope on us, that we have to give them the 100% that they deserve. So that is where uh, you start evolving as a surgeon. And I think uh, that's what keeps us going, you know, I mean, of course, there are a couple of, uh, I mean, uh, conditions where uh, it is end stage, like some tumors which are high grade cancerous tumors, where uh, you have a certain amount of expectancy, life expectancy. I think even in that areas, we start understanding that uh, it's about that quality of life, the few more days or the few more months or few more years of life that you are providing to the patient. And uh, that is something that is very important and very precious for that person. You know, like living an extra day is something that is very precious to that person. Maybe he can do so many things in those few days that we give him extra. And that is when you realize that uh, you are just playing a part in this entire picture.
yeah. and you you just need to give give it your hundred percent at that point of time. Yeah, thank you, thank you for giving. You know, understanding your a single day in life. I think you know, I'm sure you see so much, and it's really brave of you to understand. You know how you feed off from that hope as well. Ante ka kunda anta hope ante yoke hopelessness situation lo kuda walo ka hope to unto naru ante. How much of that learning, or you know, how much of that observation translates into your own life, you know, for Dr. Ravish as a person. Madam, this is something uh, I think any any doctor faces this. That chala sar le mo thun ante mana ki e work tensions so yanta mana we end end up carrying it in our homes. Mm. So I think uh, as we grow in our uh, profession, we understand to differentiate between work and home. I think so that is important for any profession, and it's equally pro important for a doctor as well. Of course, chala roj la launte ante mana ki work lo chala patient mana some mistake happened, and because of that the patient uh, is suffering. That time your day is obviously not going to be very happy. But uh, as we grow into our uh, profession, definitely we get to learn to differentiate work and home, and I think that is very important if you want to stay sane for a very long time. Coping up. Coping up, yes. yes. So you need to leave work at work and come back and spend time with family and you know have those uh, uh, de-stressing time every day, so that you 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 are recharged and go back to work at uh, full energy levels. If you don't choose to not do, or if you are not doing that, man, I am not to jaraga ko pooch. Manu kaavali an ko nee di leda chayali an ko nee di. Manu yanti intention unna kora. There could be those points where adi jaraga do, or you know maybe there will be some uh, glitches to it, or you know ko na atankalu or however you know. Alanti time lo ka irritation gani, you know kopal gani. Adi are there points where you experience something like that you yes, know, yes maybe at i'm sure you know at yes. home or at work adokate kaakunda rendu de enti ante when you give a news that you know somebody needs this kind of a treatment or something you must be dealing with others anger and others you know frustration and all those things so how do you cope up with all these so you ask me two different things yes first thing enti ante ani manaki chaala saarlu you would be seeing that uh, a lot of doctors are not very well behaved or they are frustrated or itla chaal saal man kin pista untundi and uh, uh, again when i look back into my career when i had the first neurosurgeon whom uh, i observed during my residency days in general surgery we used to see him as a very nice person outside but when it comes to the ot we used to be seeing him as a ferocious man you know always shouting at people everything has to be perfect and everything like that and uh, i used to get scared seeing him at that point of time fortunately or unfortunately today i have also become that person because i think uh, at work a lot of times uh, specifically with our field is like you know you have to give that 100% perfection mm. is very much required you there is not even a uh, chance for uh, or causing an a 0.1% error i think how we try to overcome these uh, things is by framing protocols okay so and uh, the people you work with have to be explained this protocols in a very nice way so in a very detailed way so that uh, we become something like muscle memory so most of the times when we are operating at this stage like you know my assistant or my nurse i don't even have to tell the instrument that i need next they understand it with my hand gestures and you know it becomes like an automated process yeah. i think when at work i think if when things get automated and when manaki uh, muscle memory anedi vacheste then uh, most of the things are sorted and these anger issues and everything start coming down and uh, something that i do personally is i don't uh, hesitate in going and telling sorry to people who i might have shouted at that point of time a lot of times it happens when you know i something is not to that perfection and we end up uh, having that anger issues and we end up shouting at somebody but i make sure that i end that before the day ends you know yeah. like i go back to that particular nurse i go back to that particular uh, assistant and i apologize for being rude to them and then explain them that why i was rude mm. you know most of the times when we do this exercise uh, the mistake doesn't happen in the future so i think uh, it's all about uh, expressing your anger and uh, 
టు ద సెకండ్ క్వశ్చన్ మీరు అడిగింది పేషెంట్స్కి మనం చెప్పినప్పుడు హౌ డు ద రియాక్ట్ దట్ ఈస్ సంథింగ్ దట్ ఈస్ నాట్ యాజ్ సింపుల్ యాజ్ దిస్ బికాస్ దీస్ ఆర్ ద పీపుల్ దట్ ఆర్ క్లోజ్ టు యూ అండ్ దీస్ ఆర్ ద పీపుల్ దే వర్క్ విత్ యూ ఎవ్రీ డే సో దే అండర్స్టాండ్ యూ సో ఐ థింక్ విత్ పేషెంట్ ఇట్స్ ఎ ఈవెన్ బిగర్ టాస్క్ ఫర్ అస్ అగైన్ బట్ ద ఆన్సర్ టు ఇట్ ఇస్ అగైన్ టేకింగ్ యువర్ టైమ్ అండ్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయినింగ్ దెమ్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఐ థింక్ ఇఫ్ యూ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ దెమ్ విత్ విత్ ప్రీవియస్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్స్ or you explain them that uh, this is the thing and you give them that time that is required to explain them most of the patients also understand like i, I told you like you know like the way we practice has changed over years now we sit with the patients and we kind of explain them what are the outcomes that are going to be there and we give them a choice of outcomes a lot of times and then uh, uh, this process might take time but i think investing in this process is something that is uh, very necessary exact term for this is uh, uh, like you know patient centric practice that is what we are doing right now where we do not dictate uh, things to the patient that no this is the thing this is the thing in fact we become a part of their journey like you know we explain them this is the thing and we will be there th- with you throughout the journey and that is what uh, when we explain them the concept of this patient centric way of treatment, uh, d- treatment or uh, we explain them then you know we are your partners in this journey once that trust is there from them i think uh, the anger is again gone and then you know they start trusting you and they start uh, believing in you i think this was there always there in medical practice but i think over uh, years maybe in it faded out because of few other uh, reasons but again it is definitely coming back but yeah in the yester years with doctors my parents were doctors uh, it used to happen automatically yeah. they never use the term called patient centric but they always behave patient centric but now we have to understand this term and then uh, work towards it maybe because the patients are also more informative these days yeah yeah the fabric because, of patients have also changed yeah the yeah. like you know this lot of other things also the patients are more informative uh sorry to say this but patients are also like you know very impatient yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> like you have so many options these days yes i mean it's it's a it's a right thing to have options yeah. but uh, a lot of times you know like they you get multiple opinions and you are you're completely confused which is right which is wrong yeah these things were not there in yester years yeah and yanni vache sariki manake entanta confusion perigi pothundi confusion perigi poyi dan valla misinformation ekkadanna cp9 ankonde dan tho vache anger is something that is very difficult to deal and i think the only solution is uh, uh, sitting with them and talking with them and giving them the time that they require so both the questions you have answered as dr ravish what about ravish as a person anger issues or you know something which has not worked in a way that you wanted how do you deal with something like that so yeah i mean i have my moments when i lose it definitely atla you know ever ni kopadanu ani cheppatledu that's what i told you something that uh, i make sure is like you know i don't sleep through it you know like if if there is something that uh, has happened through the day i at least share it with uh, some close friends or my wife or somebody you know i i definitely share it with them and then i try to sort it out before the day ends so that is something that uh, probably is i read somewhere and is helping me out a lot not to carry it to the next not, day not to carry it to the next day yeah. yes so the emotion as much as possible if we can resolve it resolve it or yes. at least you know translate it out yes that's why maybe people journal yes people you know just these days i'm also hearing that people leave voice notes yes and then just delete them if you want yeah so there is some uh actually beautiful apps like you know where you don't need to, need a diary you can just yeah. keep typing your journals on yeah. your phone the digital digital diaries journals. and everything you you have so many things these days what i understand is one try to have a process so yes. that you know it will mitigate yes you know the reasons why things should go wrong yes and the second thing is as much as possible just resolve it for the day yes so ila inni chestunnapudu there will be different situations where are the uh, in terms of the situations you might have to be adaptive enough mirana to yester years ki ee roj ki inta teda undi ante i'm sure only those who have adapted are the ones who are again you know yes. consistent now again so when you come across those situations or how do you take those situations where you see that you know what i might have to change my perspective or i might have to change the way i do things or i express it could be different things so how adaptive 
do you think you are and how has it helped you or sometimes maybe as a block also if you are yes. not able to adapt? I think uh, it's adapting is very, very uh, necessary because uh, um, like I said, like, you know, with, through the journey of being a neurosurgeon, I, I see myself, I've adapted so much in the way I practice from the, the day one I joined my training to after I cleared my training and I came out, I understood that, uh, you know, like about hope and everything what we need to give to the patient. So that's a sign that I adapted, you know. And then now we have adapted to this patient-centric way of practicing. And uh, so adapting is very much required. But at the same time, you need to understand that uh, you need to define your values. When our values need define values, we need to define our values. Our values should be core. And then values should be core. And then these values should be core. E values ko samu, nenu etla, how can I adapt to the, to get to these values faster in a more better way. I think if you have those values set, you can adapt and you know, you know, you know your boundaries, how much to adapt. Yeah. Understanding the outcome. Understanding and the outcome. In this situation, this is important. Yeah. yeah. So those values and those, uh, that vision should be very solid in you. Yeah. I think you need to, manamu, uh, most of the time we do this mistake that we forget to give time to understand this values and what are we working for. Our core. Adokka sari man mind lo manam define ches kuni. We, at least, you know, like the best thing will be writing it down on paper. Yeah. You know. Defining And then it. defining it, what you are and what you are working towards. And then uh, our goal and man mind lo set type in the Like the way I adapted is, of course my goal also changed. In the sense that, you know, now I work towards this patient-centric way of uh, doing things. And then, so this is my uh, vision, you know. I want to work and create an organization, you know, like everybody around me to cater to this way of uh, working in, in the hospital. I think so, that is something that I define. And now how we adapt our practices, our uh, behavior, our staff's behavior, how we do it is all towards inclined towards this mm. so our our boundaries our goals are all set dan toti you know like uh, i think adapting becomes very easy yeah because outcome clear ga unte outcome clear madle avanna odul call sochna le pe march al sochna i think sochna. you know yeah. that so be. sometimes letting go is very difficult when you are uh, when you don't have these goals and visions uh, set you know like it becomes very very difficult for us to letting mm. go letting go yeah and but when you have these uh, uh, things set you are, you are very clear that I am letting go because I am going to achieve this yes that time you have a solid reason to uh, let go things yeah so have there been any instances along the situations where you had to let go yeah there are many situations where we have to let go uh, we come across uh, patients where uh, uh, they are not happy with what they have got maybe an end stage disease and we couldn't cure the patient because the disease is like that and sometimes people do not understand. When we talk about uh, patient-centric way of practicing, sometimes we have to budge to that, you know, like patient might not be happy with me and he might shout at me and, and you know, like he might uh, pick up a fight with the friend desk staff or somebody in the hospital. And sometimes we just have to uh, just let go of it and, and yeah. you know, like yeah. understand that uh, this one patient is not uh, or that one particular relative is not the the defining factor but it's a majority of people that we are working for yeah. and sometimes you have to let go i mean that happens at at the a very hospital. regular intervals for us yeah because in the mundu mana maatladukunna tu because your outcome is defined you know it's again as you said patient centric so ee lopal enanti disturbances ochina letting go there i think you know is also helping you adapt yes to you know that's where we don't yes. take yeah. yes you know going through all these things Sometimes there could be those dark phases as well. Dark phases which you have to face, you have to accept, acknowledge. And, uh, you know, could be your fears or could be something which you don't want to face, but it just comes straight onto our faces yes. sometimes. Alan to situations like that, how do you deal with those? Fortunately, I think I, I strongly believe the dark days are over for me because uh, bless you <laughs> yeah. so dark days ante andi like uh, when i uh, was in my training phase when i was uh, in my residency of uh, neurosurgery 
that time uh, i definitely had a very dark phase where i was not able to digest why we have to see so much of suffering why do we have to see so much of death and then uh, like i said that that one particular uh, when we started interacting with patients relatives patients and then we started acknowledging the fact that you know this is that one day we are giving to the patient or one year we are giving to the patient you know that kind of uh, positive vibes when we started getting it i i kind of you know like passed through those dark moments and started seeing the light in even those dreadful conditions i think uh, that's one thing and your fear of course you need to have fear i think without fear you will never uh, be there you know like to your perfection the fear of uh, me doing something wrong is something that is making me more and more perfect you know like you know like driving perfect you myself yeah. every day and you know like i keep reading i keep studying and um, you know i keep attending conferences because we want to improve because we fear that we might not give what is the out there to our patients like maybe there is a new technology that is coming up yeah. maybe some new invention that is coming up yeah. and if we do not have this fear that i will not be able to give best for my patients i will never go and learn it yeah. so i think fear is a good thing but being in dark is not not a good thing you need to definitely work towards it try and overcome those dark moments and uh, uh, but that's it's about it i think fear yeah, is a thank you for bringing this aspect that you know you cannot go away from fears or you know yes. fears just don't dissolve just like that yes it just keeps us what we are you know it just keeps us real so ipudu ivanni choostunappudu when you talk about the emotions as such you being a neurosurgeon you're actually working with brain cells yeah yeah ante ipudu uh, as much as i can say that you know if that's the hardware the emotions are the software ante yeah yeah so how do you correlate because uh, being a neurosurgeon into science into so much of understanding of the physiology of it the mind and the emotions and these are the psychology of it yes the emotions and all are the heart of the phys- you know the physiology however so how do you balance and how how much of it do you agree in terms of uh, the softer aspects being a reason for the way we are in the kante physiologically we are all the same if you cut open all our brains they'll all be the same more or less yes but how we think is so different and uh, you know that mind and everything that matters so how do you think as a doctor that you agree with alternate methods of you know be it in terms of healing be it in terms of curing are there any instances science i think avadu anu peskundi but then you know that's what we thought but then mental mapping or you know their whole mental flexibility or understanding or the openness that somebody has actually gone me cases lo mere emanna chusara alantivi yes definitely choose them and i see like uh, i have a lot of patients are not not just one example there are so many examples where uh, i can tell you that uh, i never thought that he or she would have improved so much i so to give you one example i have a personal friend who i treated who, who had a bike accident and uh, he had a cord transaction that's like some spinal cord being completely um, broken and then um, Uh, we never thought he will walk again but he's a very strong man you know like one of my friend from my school days and we know that he's always been a very mentally strong person so he aggressively did his physiotherapy and he never lost hope so it took almost i think about 3 4 years of physiotherapy for him which is very very brave of him that he st- stuck to it you know and mm. he kept on improving you know even if he is able to get up from bed that he was used to feel happy about it mm-hmm. and then you know he kept on going Small and today he is at least able to walk with calipers yeah so that is something the day i treated him the day i saw his mri and everything i thought it will never happen yeah. but it happened yeah. and uh, at the same time there is something that you need to understand about brain you know in even anatomically there's something called neural plasticity yes yes our brain is a very magical thing where even if one part of the brain is completely destroyed because of a disease or because of some uh, physical trauma maybe in an rta a road traffic accident itlantappudu manake entante aa part of the brain poyina gaani the other part of the brain will start taking over this function but manam daaniki we have to give effort 
దానికి ట్రైనింగ్ అంటే రీహాబిలిటేషన్ అంటాం ఆ రీహాబిలిటేషన్ మనం చేసుకుంటూ ఉంటే ద అదర్ సెల్స్ ద నార్మల్ సెల్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ దేర్ ఇన్ ద బ్రెయిన్ విల్ స్టార్ట్ టేకింగ్ కేర్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఫంక్షన్ ఫ్రాంక్లీ స్పీకింగ్ దీనికి ఒక లిమిట్ అంటూ లేదండి సో దిస్ న్యూరల్ ప్లాస్టిసిటీ ఈజ్ అస్ అ వండర్ వేర్ you know it's it's still under debate and it's still being researched because there are no medications that can like really uh, you know boost this uh, neural plasticity but like you said the alternative methods like let it be counseling uh, physiotherapy or uh, the other forms of healing whatever you call this is ultimately you know like driving this neural plasticity to work correct yeah? yeah so when this neural plasticity happens and then you know i've seen patients with that particular part of the brain completely gone but the function is completely returned yes we see that so many examples and this is what we explain patients as well that you don't need to lose hope because you you went through a road traffic accident and your brain is destroyed you go through physiotherapy you will get normal some day but it, it takes a lot on the patient side because you know it's not only about uh, going through this neural plasticity but it's also about the trauma or the post traumatic stress that we call that a person goes through so you know any kind of uh, methods to heal is always a welcome for that patient and uh, i come from a school where i believe in all kinds of healing you know i mean if it's not only allopathy medications but all other things also combined together should be uh, taken into play when you're healing a mind maybe that's the reason they say mind is also limitless yes mind is also boundaryless because yes. you know as you said if there is a possibility because of this neuroplasticity that brains can start wiring in new ways yes yes so that means we are actually creating stuff yes thank you that actually validates also yes. so much that you know we are trying to do how do you feel as a neurosurgeon as a technical doctor so would you like to come and actually you know attend some of our sessions or you know be there yes definitely give some sessions yeah, as well i mean i mean i i do have my share of uh, stressful days and i do have my share of uh, fears where probably this kind of healing will definitely help me and uh, i think like i said earlier as well i think holistic treatment is something that is uh, should be promoted and i think you're doing a great job at it at by giving these uh, so many methods of healing and a one roof i think uh, that's the way to go forward yeah and so i think i'll definitely recommend a lot of my patients also who need thank these you. services <laughs> thank you yeah because uh, what i felt the reason in fact a lot of people have been asking me why did you do this why would a coach need this kind of a, a space and everything we are talking about artificial intelligence we are talking about metaverses coming in we are talking about so much more technology taking over but we are forgetting the fact that at the end of the day we are all human beings we are driven by emotions yes we need that hug we need that acknowledgement we need that pat on the back saying that yes but then everybody is so busy with their phones and everything that this thing is getting distant so maybe that's another major reason why i wanted something like this as a possibility so wonderful thank you thank you so much for coming and uh, this is a small something that we have put together for you thank you thank you thank you so much dr yes. ravish thanks that was a wonderful discussion with dr ravish so as he's definitely made it clear to us brains have the capacity to learn at any point so i wish all of you excellent healing and excellent living we all deserve it thank you Thank mm-hmm. you.